Okay. And realm is just used for caching. It, it gets kind of complicated. You know, um, so you'll notice I mentioned, actually, let me go back. You'll notice I mentioned this password file here. Um, and this, this stores a, a database of user passwords. And uh, you can be, a, it can be an absolute path or the name according to, like it'll say, it's relative to this directory containing this current file. So uh, let's go into password. So I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a user, okay? I'm going to name the user Alan, and his password's going to be Barry. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so. Wow. Um, <laughs> so I'm going to write that out. And now I'm going to start it. I type RC, uh, SDN, serve, and then start. Done. So. Yeah, there's um, tutorials. I mean, I we don't expect you to remember these, but we're going to watch there in our tutorials out there. So what I did is I just made a uh, directory in my home, uh, I, just in case I screw something up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to check out now. So I'm going to do SDN, CO, uh, SDN, localhost, slash, soda. And <coughs> ask me for Andrew. I don't know why. Is that your username, right? No. Oh, because it was cached in, in yeah, don't worry about it. Um, <laughs> Barry, check down. Okay, so we go into Soda. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a file, okay? So I'm gonna do touch myself, <laughs> and then I'm gonna add it. He's been saying on that one, guys. <laughs> so I'm gonna add myself, okay? And the A means it's add. There's uh, oh, <coughs> okay. There's a D for okay, delete. Yeah, do uh, do uh, SKN SD. So it would be the same, right? But yeah. That's a list of all the files that have changed since the last uh, revision, mm -hmm. um, which in this case is just the one file I added and the A again. Now, is added. yeah, there could be. I think I don't know if it's D or R. I think it's D um, for deleting a file. Or might be removed. I think it's actually an exclamation point. But it does, is it, I don't remember. It doesn't matter. Uh, and then M is for modified, and then A is for added. And then there's nothing for it. You touch another file, but don't add it, and then it's going to be. You might get in trouble. So, again, um, question mark <laughs> means it's a new file it, that's not in the repo, um, not in the repository, but it's um, not added locally yet, um, so it doesn't know what it is, so it's just a question. Right. So, go away. Okay. Um, now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to check in. So, I type in SVN commit. Or CO. Or I mean CI, sorry. Yeah. I know that time. Commit. <laughs> and now it's going to ask me for my log message. So what I do is I type it in here. I'm going to say initial import. <laughs> that might not work. Okay. It's not a special character. It's a letter D. It's <laughs> 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 okay. the colon. Special work. Okay, so I'm going to hit. Okay, gonna sometimes I check things in and if I have characters in my message, it'll just fail without saying why. So. That's if you don't want to keep it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, okay. so transmit file data, committed revision one. Now, what Alan's going to do is on his computer here, he's going to change it. I'll plug you in. I'll give you my IP address. He's going to check out. Yeah. So I'm going to go SVN, right? Check out. CO. Or check out. SVN. It's um, 10, uh, 140, 233, 101. Okay, and then slash soda. soda. So I don't know. This it, it, it should, in theory, work, and it would in many networks, but we're having a little bit of network trouble there. Thanks, so anyway, ASU. Yeah, sure. you, can, you can imagine what this happens. You create a local copy of all the files that you, check, you put in his repository, and you can copy them. Okay. Go ahead and check in and check out and update files. Like so I'm going to pretend he did that. But yeah, let's so pretend I added a file. And okay. we're almost going to wrap up. So back over here. Okay. So I'm going to edit myself. I'm going to say cool guy. I'm going to say. Status M modified. Is this your name? I'm so cool. 
<laughs> Community revision two. Okay, and, and it goes on like that. You can do SVN branch, you can do SVN. Once you've branched off, you can merge back. You can do SVN tag, all those all those sorts of different things so under SVN help. So after you committed, you didn't have to check it out again? Right, right. Correct. Um, because no, the most I wanted the copy, I would have to SVN up. Sorry, right? Because the most up-to-date version of the repository is now on my computer. Because I've just added one more. Now that's it's not always true because some other person may be working on a different part of, of what you're doing, in which case you would have to update. Um, but SVM takes care of that normally. <coughs> um, but it will encounter issues sometimes if it can't figure out what the changes. There's too many of them. But uh, normally it's it can, it's pretty good figured out. Right. Well, the answer to your question is you don't check out more than once. You just check in and update. So check in is pushing to that server and update is grabbing just the changes. So, does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. Right, Josh. After you check something out, is there any indication anywhere? Do other people know that you checked it out? Um, nope. That's all we're yeah, we can, we can. I mean, yeah, if they, I mean, if their server logs it, yeah, but like, I don't think SVN would be like, okay, some checked out. So. Okay, any other questions on SVN? Yes. Does, when you're like pushing files, what does SVN do with symbolic links? Does it follow them or ignore them? Symbolic links are preserved. Meaning that so just as soon as you them check them, them, it means as soon as you check them out again, uh, it will still be a symbolic link. Now, you can't run into problems if you check something out on Linux. Um, if you check something out on Linux and try and check it out on Windows, you're going to kind of hate you. Um, and I'm not quite sure what, I tried to check in a Linux distribution. Yeah, there's also, um, if, you, if you're a little intimidated by the prospect of setting up SVN on your own computer, you might want to try Beanstalk. Um, there is a free version of Beanstalk. Um, you can only have like up to 20 megabytes in there, so you wouldn't really want to have your Photoshop documents or anything. Um, <laughs> but you can set up a repository for free and um, even have a couple collaborators. And um, if you want, you can enable guest access if it's like some sort of open source type community project. Um, also, there is one concern though, if you're concerned about um, you know, your code being in someone else's control, that's a legit concern that you know, the Beanstalk people don't have a copy of your files. Um, also, and this is, um, um, as Andrew calls it, the SVN Bible, so if you are having trouble, go ahead and it's like It's check like with that. OpenGL, it's like the red book, okay? <laughs> so, it has everything. So, um, yes. How does uh, SourceForge SourceForge actually uses Subvert. What do you mean in regards to? Well, I, would, uh, I mean, I'm kind of confused as to how you get uh, anything or contribute to anything on SourceForge. So SourceForge has a site. Um, if you go into their help, you can actually look at how do I commit. The, you have to s submit your SSL keys, because they do it over HTTP and over SSL, which is they do it over an HTTPS port, Apache, except it's HTTP. Um, it gets, there's kind of a lot of information, but um, their help has everything. They, they allow public access, and then, so you check it out, and then you do your edits, and then you use the diff command, and then you email the project lead. They like it, though. 